think there is someone at the door. That's all right. I'm sure I don't want what they're selling anyway. Actually, it's a package delivery. That's okay. I'll get it later. It's from XO Drones. What do we have here? XO, I haven't heard of them before. XO Drones is a new company based in Salt Lake City, Utah. According to their website, they specialize in quality drones at an affordable price and offer professional support and training included with every purchase. Wait, they're in the US? Weren't you listening? I just stated Salt Lake City, Utah. Their web presence started in April of 2020. Don't get cocky or I'll lend your processors to the sewage treatment plant again. Not again. It took nearly three weeks for the smell to subside last time. Cinemaster 2. Is this a new release? Build quality looks pretty good. What are the specs on this thing? The Cinemaster 2 is a new release. It has a Sony camera sensor with 4K video, 11 megapixel photos, 3-axis gimbal with electronic image stabilization, brushless motors, precision GPS, level five wind resistance, 28 minute battery life in a half a mile range. So professional specs like that, I'm guessing about 1500? The Cinemaster 2 kit sells for $499 with a current launch sale for $349. Wait, 349 for these specs? Oh, I gotta fly this thing. Allie, you ready for a road trip? Yes, I love car rides. All right, so here we are in the field. We're gonna put the Cinemaster 2 to the test. As Ali mentioned, this is a newer company, which is exciting to me. I really love to help out new companies, uh, see the technology they bring to the table. Uh, hopefully from this review uh, and my honest feedback, uh, they can take some of the feedback that I have and you guys have and apply it to future products that even make it better and better. So I'm really excited uh, to be able to work with Exo. Now, one of the claims to fame of this particular model, it is not below 250 grams. It is heavier than that. But the key with that is it is a wind resistance of a level five. What that means is you can do 20, 25 mile an hour winds and the footage should still be stable and the drone is powerful enough it can come back. It's the worst darn feeling. You get a little bit of wind, try to bring a drone home and the thing sits there stuck in the wind you know, a quarter of a mile away uh, over a bunch of trees or water and you're stuck there. So I was able to take this out yesterday. We had about a 22, 23 mile an hour wind, pretty gusty. And I took some of that footage. So later I'm gonna show that as well so you can see what the footage looks like in that particular wind. So we can get a real test of that as well, just to see if it's marketing hype or not. So one thing I wanna say before we take this thing up in the sky and test it out is I am going to be doing giveaways on this channel. So of course, make sure if you're not subscribed, you do that because all the tech, drones, things like that I've been talking about on this channel, we're gonna give some of that away to you guys because you're awesome. So make sure you subscribe. Can't wait if you don't subscribe. All right, so it's asking us to calibrate. We could also uh, pull the sticks uh, down to the right to calibrate, uh, but there's also kind of this little mail which likes a message. I really like that, kind of shows you that. So we're gonna go ahead, spin this around, get that calibrated. Horizontal, okay, the lights, turn green here then we're going to do vertical all right and it is happy so we do have some video here and uh, i can see that the gimbal uh, is indeed moving so we should be good there let's uh, give this a flight see how it goes and here we go and we gotta take off let's see what happens here Nice, very nice, very nice indeed. So far, Cinemaster's looking pretty good. Little bit of, tiny bit of wobble. There's not too much wind right now, a little bit, but boy, that's uh, pretty dang stable. Pretty darn stable. Okay, and it does have some optical flow sensors underneath it, which is good. You can see that it's moving away from me, so you can see those sensors are doing its thing right now. Uh, trying to keep us level, so nice. Now there is two speeds on this as well. There's a low speed and a high speed. I'm gonna turn it into the high speed because the low speed is very low. Uh, and that is just for cinematic type footage. And we'll put that in in a little bit so we can see what that looks like when we're taking some of our footage.
One thing as well is it does have a camera uh, that tilts here, which we're gonna go ahead and uh, run that down, see what that looks like. Nice, it's pretty smooth, which is good. Okay, so we are now in the low mode. So that should slow all of the functions down. Okay, so let's go ahead and do an orbit here. I uh, see what that looks like. And we're gonna go ahead and hit this uh, orbit. See what happens here. Okay, so there I am in the orbit here. It's not too bad, I'll take it. It uh, seems to be doing its thing here. Of course, the uh, size of the orbit makes a difference and I have to change the size of the orbit if I want to get me in there different but of course the uh, I can move the uh, height of the orbit if I wanted to here gotta be careful that I don't run into something here uh, one of the things I don't like about this type of function on here and something that uh, perhaps they can look at is to stop this orbit the only thing that I can do is go back into the mode and hit the orbit again now, if I was going to crash or get close to something, me to remember to go back in and click on this orbit is probably not the quickest thing to do. So uh, you have to keep that in mind. Let's just see how, how it uh, goes here. Uh, see if this follow mode works at all. And there I am in the picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk a little bit this way, see if it keeps catching me here, see if it follows me along. Yep, and there it comes, sure enough, okay. But yeah, the follow me seems to do its thing here, so that's okay. So I'll just do one quick little flight here, and then we're gonna see how the automatic return to home does, because I know the battery is getting kind of low. So let's turn this off. There we go. Okay, there is our low battery. And that thing is screaming back towards me here. Alrighty, so you can see where he ended up here. We're maybe uh, uh, four or five-ish feet away uh, from the pad. Not too bad, not too bad. I've had a lot worse uh, recently. That was the maiden flight here of the Cinemaster II. Uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, the footage did look really nice on here. Uh, I am going to go back into the studio and I'll give you guys just a little bit more uh, information on kind of what was on the box and any uh, final thoughts that I had because, uh, again, uh, with this new company, I want to give them honest feedback. Uh, Allie, is there anything that uh, I missed here? Yes. 
The actual flight time was 25 minutes, and I analyzed the video quality recorded by the drone, and it is true 4K at 3840 by 2160 pixels at 30 frames per second. Awesome, so we'll see you again in the studio. We'll finish this video out. All right, so back here in the studio to talk about what comes in the box and some of the likes and dislikes of this drone after we had a chance to fly it. So first of all, the case that it comes in is a hard case, which is really nice, not one of the foam ones that could damage things. With regard to what comes in the case, it is pretty bare bones. You get the drone body and a battery, unless you order extra batteries for it. You can order up to three batteries in this case. Two sets of props, USB cables for charging, screwdriver and screws to install the props. Also, you get the remote in the box. The remote itself is uh, pretty similar to some other models that I've seen from other manufacturers. Does have double A batteries. It is not a rechargeable remote, but I really like having these double A's in here because this thing lasted uh, the entire time and barely went down. So I never have to really worry about charging. During our flight, I did see a few things that I thought maybe could use some improvement. And those are one, would be nice if you were in a mode, like an orbit mode or a follow mode, and you wanted to cancel that mode. You could do that by pressing the cancel button, the stop button, moving the stick something, rather than having to re-enter the mode and then re-click that. Because if you're getting into danger or running into something, you're orbiting and it gets too close, the time it takes you to go find that mode and then click that mode and stop that is probably too late and you've probably already crashed into something. So I'd like to see another way of canceling that at a single click from the main menu. In addition to that, I'd like to see some additional adjustments for things like the sticks, the gimbal, and the camera itself. I'd love to be able to adjust those custom for me, really slow those down that meet my style. In addition, the camera, I'd like to be able to do some long exposures, things like that. So I'd like to be able to adjust the shutter speed, uh, ISO, some things like that a little more independently to give me a little more custom uh, feel or custom adjustments uh, for the camera itself so I can take some pictures, maybe in some different dark settings, things like that. Uh, also, on the app itself, I didn't notice any place that it was showing me the speed itself. I'd sure like to see that data point brought out to the app. And lastly, something I think they could improve is you'll notice when the drone did land, whether it was a return to home or I was manually landing it myself, the drone did come down to the ground and bounce three or four times uh, before it finally settled out. And then there was an extended delay before the props themselves shut off. Uh, I would like to see that come down and slow a little bit, do a little better, more precision landing, and then the props could shut off within a second or two rather than waiting five or six seconds that they do now. Now, I did like a lot of things about this drone. It did fly really well. One of the things that was a really nice benefit was having a three-axis gimbal and EIS built in, the electronic image stabilization. It did a really good job. The images were really clean. Once in a while, if I was moving fast, I did notice a little bit of a blur or a little bit of a jitter. But for this price point, it did a really, really good job most of the time. Also, it does have a real 4K camera for video, as Ali mentioned earlier. Now, some of the manufacturers, I think, play some marketing games saying that it's a 4K camera. And indeed, it takes a 4K picture, maybe a low-res 4K. But when you get into the video, it's much less than that. And you can tell. Uh, this one indeed does have a high-resolution 4K camera. And it looks good. It really does look good. So they didn't cheat on those specs at all. Not only did they do 4K 30, but they also have 1080p with 60 available as well if you want to do some slow motion. One thing I do like about the remote that comes with this drone is the antennas are real. If you look close, you'll see a wire running up into the antenna here. It tells us that we're going to get some good Wi-Fi connection. Also tells us that there's a little better quality than some of the other ones that just have antennas for show. Another great bonus that I did mention as well when I showed the pictures, it does have some pretty darn good wind resistance. Now that's something you just don't get when you get the sub 250 type drones. So I really do like having one that's a little bit heavier. I was running 20, 22 mile an hour winds and really you couldn't tell. You could see the trees and the weeds moving. You could see the waves in the water, but it did a pretty darn good job holding its place. It really was stable in the air. So kudos to them for the higher wind resistance. Now this is a US company, which for me is a bonus I love to see. Now, I think they are making the units themselves overseas in their actual manufacture. However, they are doing their support and their warehousing and distribution and things from here. So that's awesome. They do have tech support six days a week. 
And indeed, I purposely reached out uh, to the technical support in the chat to find out if they responded or if they just blew me off. Indeed, they did respond relatively quick every time. And lastly, the Cinemaster 2 is a new release for XO. And because it's a new release, uh, they are offering it now for $349 for this entire kit. So $349 to get a three axis gimbal with a decent camera on it that is true 4K with electronic image stabilization with a level five wind resistance, GPS, precision GPS, SD card built in. I mean, that is a really good price uh, for everything that you see here. So uh, they do have other models as well, and I am really excited uh, to be testing those out for you as well. So hopefully I can work something out with EXO and we can go to the other models and show you those as well. Uh, but I believe that EXO has done an excellent job hitting a great price point uh, for a great build quality of a drone. And that being said, I really do appreciate your guys' time watching this video. I hope you learned something new, even if it's something very small. I hope you enjoy the content of this channel. The way you can support this channel is by simply clicking the subscribe, it is free, and I really do appreciate it. it. Helps this channel grow. And of course, if you do have anything that you'd like me to ask or anything you'd like me to do or test, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to address them if I can. And with that, again, I appreciate it. Till next time, and next video, good flying.